all you need to know about Excel formulas and functions in 10 minutes. Now there's lots of features in Excel, but what makes Excel formula so beautiful is if I change a formula input, I'm going to change 256 to 3. Watch what happens to all of these number answers, the text answer right here, and this formula telling us if we pass the sales hurdle. If I hit Enter, everything instantly updates. No other feature in Excel does that except for Excel formulas and functions. Now we're going to cover these 15 amazing topics. And it doesn't matter if you are a total beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Being fluent with these 15 points makes you an Excel formula and function master. Our goal for our first formula is to multiply spot price times units. Every formula starts off with an equal sign as the first character in the cell. And to put the cell reference C23 into our formula, we can do it two ways. We can use our mouse and click. If you accidentally click in the wrong cell, as long as the dancing ants are still dancing, click where you want to readjust. Now I'll show you the second way to put a cell reference in just a moment. But our goal is to multiply, so we put a math operator. And now I'm going to use my left arrow to put the cell reference in. The rule is, if the cell references are close, it's faster to use your arrow keys. Now we want to put this formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. So I use Control Enter. Now I want to copy this formula down the column. Notice in the lower right hand corner, that little green box is called the fill handle. This is the selection cursor. But watch what happens to my selection cursor when I move it to the edge of the cell. That's the move cursor. We don't want that one. We want the crosshair or, as I like to call it, the angry rabbit. I can double click and send the formula down. It copies all the way down. It knows to stop because there's an empty cell there. Now I need to come to the last cell and put it in edit mode with F2 because I want to verify that my formula is working. And it's working because this formula got both formula inputs for this row. If we watch the formula copy down the column, Notice for each new row, the cell references are moving as we copy the formula down. The name for this type of cell reference is relative cell reference. If our goal is to add this column of numbers, we can use the built-in sum function. And there's a keyboard, Alt equals. Notice the equal sign, the built-in function sum, and the dancing ants around the range of cells E23 to E32. So I can hit Enter. Now there's a problem when we multiply two numbers and get lots of extra decimals like this and then use each one of these formula results in another formula. And the problem is, because this is money, that 54 pennies is not correct. In order to get the correct total, we're required to round. We're going to use the built-in function round. And we know we have to use the round function because we're required to round. This is money. We do have extra decimals. And we're using those formula results in a subsequent formula. In cell E23, I hit F2. After the equal sign, I click. I type round. When I see the function I want highlighted in blue, I hit the Tab key. This screen tip helps me figure out how to complete the function. Number, that's the number I want to round. I very carefully come to the end. And with my I beam cursor, I click. I type a comma to get to the next argument. In bold, number of digits. That's which position in this number do I want to round to. Counting from the decimal, I count 1, 2 to the right. Because that's the penny position, I type a 2. That tells round to round to the penny. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And now I have the correct total. Our import tax formula has to multiply the sales in each row times the import tax rate. We know we're going to have to round because there's already a decimal past the penny position. Equals round tab left arrow times, and we put our tax rate into our formula. Uh-oh, that violates Excel's golden rule. And that rule says, if a formula input can change, we put it in a cell, label it, and in our formula, we refer to that 
formula input with the cell reference. The reason this rule is so important is because if we need to change that formula input later, it's too hard to go and find it in the formulas. But if it's sitting in a cell with a label, we change it here, and all our formulas update. Now we need to think about this cell reference. That relative cell reference will not work because when I copy the formula down, I don't want this to move to each row. So to convert it from a relative cell reference to an absolute cell reference, which locks it throughout the copy action, I hit the F4 key. That puts the two dollar signs in to lock that cell reference. Comma 2, close parentheses. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Come to the last cell, and I hit F2. That is amazing. We have a relative and absolute cell reference in the same formula. Enter, Enter, Alt equals to add, Enter. Now net sales is a simple subtraction equals left arrow, left arrow, minus left arrow. Control Enter, double click and send it down. In the last cell, I hit F2. It's looking good. Enter, Enter. Alt equals. Whoa, that's why you always have to look for those dancing ants. I'm going to redirect them, click and drag. I see the correct range. I hit Enter. Now all of these formulas deliver number answers. And sometimes we want to format numbers differently than the underlying numbers. So I'm going to click and drag with my selection cursor, Home Ribbon Tab Number Group, drop down, and I'm going to select Currency. Those dollar signs and commas are not actually sitting in the cell. It's just on the surface of the cell that the dollar signs and commas are displayed. The underlying number does not change. So you can think of number formatting as formatting the display of the number without changing the underlying number. Now these are number formulas. We also want to look at how to create text formulas. Our goal in this cell is to list the product and the total sales together. That means we have to join these two items into a single cell. So we start with an equal sign, I click on the relative cell reference for the product name. And now we have to use the join operator, the ampersand. Then we click on sales. Now this is not what we want, but when we control enter, we do see that the join operator joins two things together. We just need the word sales and an equal sign between those two items. So I hit F2, and after the ampersand, in double quotes, I'm going to type sales equal and another space, close double quotes. Anytime we type text into a formula, it has to be in double quotes, ampersand to, to join the last element. And now I can Control Enter and double click and send it down. But I can't double click and send it down because there's nothing to the left, to the right, or below the formula. So in this case, I have to click and drag. That is looking beautiful. Now we want to notice that our formula did not pick up the number formatting. Formulas will never see number formatting. But luckily, in the top cell, I hit F2. There's a built-in function that will apply the currency format to a number. And that function is called dollar. So I type DO. I see it in blue. I hit Tab. We can leave this last argument out because the default is 2. Close parentheses. And now when I Control Enter, that's a beautiful text formula. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. Those cell references are working. Now there's an important visual cue to tell you whether you have a number formula or a text formula. By default, all numbers are aligned to the right. All text items are aligned to the left. All right, so number and text formulas were also allowed logical formulas. A logical formula is a formula that comes out true or false. Our logical formula is going to be to check net sales. Is it equal to or greater than our hurdle? So we start our formula with an equal sign. I'm going to get the total net sales, and I'm asking a question of that number. And the question I'm asking is, are you greater than or equal to the hurdle? Now, it's the comparative operator that causes this to be a logical formula. The result will be true or false. So when I hit Enter, I get a true, because in fact, that number is 
passed our hurdle. Now let's come up and we're going to test everything we did. Number formulas, text formulas, and our logical formulas. The units for quad is actually three. When I hit Enter, everything in this line for quad, including the totals at the bottom, the text formula and our logical formula all updated. All right, that was a lot of fun with Excel, formulas, and functions. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn even more about Excel formulas, check out this video. Also, check out these in 10-minute videos coming soon.